Hey everyone, it's Tyler Strike from Universal Rackets, and in this video, we are going to be going over how to hit an amazing forehand drive. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, we are going to be going over how to hit an amazing forehand drive. If you're a beginner, intermediate, or club level player, and you're looking to learn the forehand drive or take the forehand drive to the next level, then this is the video for you. We're going to be going over how to hit it step by step if you've never picked up a paddle before, and then at the end, and as we further get into the video, we're going to be going over tons of tips and tons of tricks to instantly improve your forehand drive and make it better. A lot of players, they have the drop, but the drive is what separates a beginner from intermediate from a lot of players, they have a drive, but they don't have a super good drive. And the reason why is because they don't come from a prior racket sport background. If you watch this video, we're going to be giving you all the tips that once you're done, and once you learn all these tips, you're going to look like you've played tennis before. You're going to look like you played racquetball before. You're going to look like you have that prior racket sport background. So let's get started. Make sure to stay tuned for the whole video. Again, we're going to be going over for beginners, and then we're going to be amping it up to more intermediate and advanced. So the first thing that you have to do when you're learning how to hit a forehand drive is you need to think about what you have to do to get the ball over the net. I want you to think two things. Number one, you need to hit the ball forward, but if you hit the ball forward, the ball goes in the net. And number two, you need to hit the ball up. Once again, number one, you need to hit the ball forward, and number two, you have to hit the ball up. Because if I just hit the ball forward, it's going to go into the net. If I just hit the ball up, it's just going to go super high. I kind of have to do both. I need to get under the ball so I can lift it over the net, and then I need to get that ball forward into the court. So what do we have to do? We have to swing forward, and also we have to get under the ball. So the best way to learn the forehand is by understanding that you have to swing low to high. Once again, if you want to hit a good forehand drive or return, you have to think that you are swinging low to high. And what I mean by that, and when you're learning the forehand, I want you to start with your paddle low, and then I want you to finish with your paddle over your shoulder. Once again, I want you to start with your paddle low, and then I want you to finish with your paddle over your shoulder. By starting low with the paddle back behind you, and then by finishing over your shoulder, that's going to ensure that you start and you get under the ball. And by finishing over your shoulder, look, what do I have to do to finish over my shoulder? I have to swing forward. So start low, finish over your shoulder, and that's the first thing that you can do to learn the proper swing path of the forehand and execute hitting the ball forward and hitting it over the net. So what you're going to do, to learn the forehand, you can have a person feed the ball to you, you can drop it to yourself, and all you're going to do is you're going to stick your paddle back, and then you're going to drop the ball, and you're going to finish over your shoulder. Again, you're going to stick your paddle back, you're going to drop the ball, and you're going to finish over your shoulder. Notice, when I finish over my shoulder, I want you to notice one key checkpoint, and that is pointing your elbow towards your target. By pointing your elbow towards your target, that ensures that you follow through. The worst thing that a beginner can do is just try to get the ball in. It's so easy to do when you're picking up the forehand, especially if you don't come from a prior racket sport background. So this is what you do, and this is what many players do. They'll try to hit, and they'll stop it. No. If I finish with my shoulder pointing forward or my elbow pointing forward every single time, that's going to ensure that I have that proper swing. So point the elbow. The second checkpoint that I wanna introduce is by pointing your paddle tip down, okay? When you take your forehand back in order to get under the ball, you don't want it to be pointing up. You don't want it to be pointing back. You want it to be pointing down. So again, you're going to point the tip of your paddle down. Now, the next thing to ensure that you point the tip of this paddle down is that you loosen up. You need to hold the paddle loose for an amazing forehand. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the tightest, one being so loose that falls out of your hand, you wanna be about a one, two, or a three. I want you to notice, I need the paddle tip pointing down. How do we get the paddle tip pointing down for this low to high forehand? It's very easy. Instead of gripping it and forcing it down, watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hold it on a scale of one to 10, a one, two, or three. So by being loose and releasing your grip and not having a death grip, that's going to orient your paddle in the proper position that the tip of the paddle is again, pointing down and backward. And then again, when I swing forward, I'm going to be pointing my elbow forward. So I'm gonna be loose, starting low, tip of paddle pointing down and backward. And then when I finish again, I'm going to be pointing my elbow forward. 
So I want you to do that over and over and over again. Again, we're thinking, starting low, being loose, making sure the paddle is pointing tips down, paddle tip is pointing down, and then we're going to finish elbow up over our shoulder. And that's the first thing that you're going to do. If you're picking up a forehand, that's how you are going to do it. For your returns, for your hits, just go out and again, start low, and then all you're going to do is finish with your elbow up. Again, start low, low, finish with your elbow up. I want you to understand that it is a two-step process, low to high. Start low, finish elbow. Start low, finish elbow. By saying these out loud, it's going to allow your muscle memory to register, and it's going to teach your brain much more easier if you can say the steps out loud to your opponent. So again, start low, finish elbow. Now, when you get past that, when you get comfortable with that, when you understand that, now you're going to have to work on actually moving to the balls. You're not going to be feeding the balls to you. The balls aren't going to be coming on a silver platter every single time. So what I want you to do is instead of start low, finish elbow, I want you to add one thing, and that's your non-dominant hand. So instead of looking like this, and again, this is step one, you're going to look like this. This is step two. You see this? Now, I'm going to have my hand out in front of me, kind of like I like to say, think that you're surfing, skateboarding, or snowboarding. You're going to be like this before you hit the ball. Instead of being like this, you're now going to get your non-dominant hand involved. You're going to get your non-dominant hand out in front. And the reason why you want your non-dominant hand is it's going to allow you to get into the proper position of the ball. Your non-dominant hand is your guide. Your non-dominant hand is the GPS to the ball. A lot of players, they struggle with proper contact point, and the reason why is because they don't involve their non-dominant hand. This non-dominant hand is going to take your game to the next level if you're learning step by step in this video, or if you don't already use it, it is going to do wonders. So again, instead of being just low to elbow, I'm going to be surfing, snowboarding, skateboarding, low to elbow. Again, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on my surfboard because we're in Florida, we're surfing cowabunga, right? Then what are you going to do? Low to elbow. The reason why you want your hand out in front is because you want your contact point out in front. You wanna make sure in pickleball for your forehand, you wanna make sure that your contact point is out in front and away from your body. Again, it's not in here, it's not close here, it is out in front and away from your body. The non-dominant hand is the first step and the most key step to get the proper contact. So what you're going to do now, and the best drill to learn this non-dominant hand, if you're just by yourself or you could have your opponent feed it, is watch what you're going to do. You're going to let the ball bounce twice now if you're doing a self-feed. So you're going to let the ball bounce twice. One, two, you're going to catch it with your non-dominant hand. You're in your surfboard, you're going to start low, and then you're going to go elbow. Again, you're going to toss the ball up in there. You're going to toss it wherever because you have to learn how to move to the ball with your non-dominant hand. Watch. One, two. I'm going to catch it. Here we are. Now start low. Elbow. Let's do one more. Here we are. Maybe I'll toss it behind me. I'm going to go one, two. Start low. Elbow. Okay. I need to finish up more. But as you guys see, now we're teaching our non-dominant hand. We're learning how to go to the ball by doing those self-feeds. If you have a partner or if you have someone playing against you and you guys are both working on this, what are you going to do? They're going to hit the ball to you. You're going to move over to it. You're going to catch it, right? And then you're going to drop it and hit it back to them and then they are going to catch it. The reason why we do a self-feed with two bounces is because it allows you to have time to really try to guide and figure it out. If you do one bounce, it's going to be two fast. So do this over and over again and then start realizing your non-dominant hand and realizing that you wanna get it out here. Don't be catching the ball like this. I understand you may can catch the ball here, but you really have to make sure your hand is out in front. A lot of players, they ask about their hands, where should their hand exactly be? You don't want it to be away from you. You don't wanna be exactly in front of you. You don't want it to be this side. You want it to be over there. We're going to be going over this non-dominant hand a little bit further into this video that's going to completely get you power, rotation, topspin, acceleration, but we are just getting it out for now and getting used to it. Now, the last thing that we're going to do with our two-step forehand is not only get our non-dominant hand out front, not only we're surfing, skateboarding, or snowboarding, but now once we finish our forehand, watch what you're going to do. You're going to catch the paddle with your non-dominant hand. The reason why a lot of players, they keep their non-dominant hand, even if they involve it, they drop it, 
or they move it to the side and then they open up our body or they open up their body. So they're gonna be hitting like this instead of hitting like this. So by catching with your non-dominant hand with the paddle up high, that's going to ensure that your body's properly turned. That's going to ensure that you swing low to high. That's going to ensure that you get under the ball. So we are catching the paddle with our non-dominant hand from the start. So again, you're gonna let the ball bounce twice. You're gonna go, here we are, right? You're gonna catch it instead of bounce it. I don't know why I bounced it. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to catch the paddle with my non-dominant hand. That's going to ensure that my non-dominant hand is going the proper way with my swing. I am lifting the ball up. I want you to think 12 o'clock's here, six o'clock's down here. I am going from six to 12. Again, I'm going from six to 12 and I'm catching up here. Another way that you can think of it is that you want to smell your armpits, okay? So once I'm done this shot, watch what I'm going to do. Thank God I put on deodorant today. So you can smell your armpits as well. If you think about that, you're probably never going to forget it. We wanna give you silly, weird things that uh, you're never going to be able to forget when you go out and hit the pickleball courts, okay? Now, what are we doing? We have that two-step process. We start low, we move, we start low, we surf, we move to the ball, we're going to pretend that we're gonna catch it, and then we're going to go elbow, right? Now, after that, now we have to work on what if the ball's high? Well, Tyler, you taught me all this. I'm going to dislike this video. I'm going to not share it with my friends. I'm going to comment that you have no clue what you're talking about. I'm a PPR X, Y, and Z certified pro, and you're completely wrong. Get out of here. Okay, listen, you guys haven't watched the whole video yet, okay? Here's the thing. If you have a ball here, what if the ball's super high? Now you're telling me start low and catch, but what if the ball's super high? What am I supposed to do? I can't do anything. Well, number one, the ball's not gonna be super high because it's a pickleball. The ball is going to bounce half the height that it comes at you because it's not a super bouncy ball. However, though, you need to learn if the ball's a little bit higher rather than around your strike zone, you're going to have to do something different. If you wanna get more power and get even higher in level, you're going to have to do something different. And this is what we are going to introduce. Instead of the forehand being a two-step process, and again, we taught you as a two-step process, I told you the forehand was low to high, guess what, I lied. If you got past this video this far and you've done everything, I've lied. The forehand is not a two-step process, the forehand is a three-step process. Now, we have to crawl before we walk. That's why we did two steps, not three. I do that with every single one of our students, and that is the reason why they're able to hit amazing forehands, because they crawled before they walked. They didn't just run, okay? So now, instead of being low to high, step one, step two, now what you're going to do, and I assure you, this is the last step for the forehand that you will ever need in your life, is you're going to go back low to high. Back low to high. You're going to, instead of take your paddle down, you're going to take your paddle back. That is step number one. Now step number two, is going to be low, or what we're going to call it is drop. That's going to get you into the low position, and then you're going to go low to high. Again, step number one is take the paddle back. Step number two is drop the paddle. Step number three is low to high. If you are a visual learner, I want you to think of the letter C. Now you are making the letter C with your swing path. I want you to understand, when you take the paddle back, that's the top of the C, then when you drop it, that's the curve of a C. And then when you go low to high, that's like the check mark. So it's like a C with a check mark, kind of like with a teacher, at least when back in my day, that's how they would grade my papers. Give me a C or an F. Just kidding, I got all A's, I majored in pickleball. However, okay, so top of the C, then you're going to make the curve of the C, and then you're going to finish over your shoulder. So you can think that you are making a C. All right, so I want you to think now again, instead of just going low to high, two steps, I want you to think three steps. Step number one, step number two, step number three. I'm going to take the paddle back, I'm going to drop the paddle, and then I'm going to swing forward. I'm gonna take the paddle back, I'm going to drop the paddle and swing forward. Now, this is kind of a difficult thing to grasp. There's so many steps, right? It's so confusing, the ball's coming at me, there's wind, there's spin, there's control, there's everything going on. How do we make it simple? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is teach you how to drop the paddle. So you're going to take the paddle back, you're going to have your partner hit it, hand it to you, or you can drop it to yourself. You're gonna let the ball bounce, then you're going to drop and hit. Again, I'm gonna take the paddle back, I'm gonna let bounce. I like it twice so I can have time and go and hit. 
So I'm going to start with my paddle back, and then when the ball comes near me, then I'm going to go and swing. Now, how do we get from point A to point B? Once again, how do we get from point A to point B? This is a huge thing where many players go wrong. They like to death grip the paddle. So what did I say? You have to be loose in the paddle. You have to let the paddle drop. I said that from square one. You have to do the exact same thing when you're doing this three-step process. So all you're going to do is you're going to take the paddle back. Notice, when I take the paddle back, I want the paddle tip facing upwards. I don't want the paddle tip facing downwards, okay? I want it facing upwards. The reason why is physics, because if you drop the paddle properly and all a drop is by releasing the paddle, by pointing it up before you release, you drop, it's going to be pointing down once you're done, okay? So again, you're going to take the paddle back with the paddle tip pointing up. It doesn't have to be super vertical. It could be between, let's say, 90 and uh, zero degrees, probably like 45 degrees. It could be a little bit higher, up to you. And then all you're going to do is drop the paddle. Again, you're gonna take the paddle back and you're going to drop. Wherever you are right now, stand up with your paddle. If you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player, this will help you so much by improving your drop. Even if you already dropped the paddle, if you can think that you're dropping the paddle a little bit more, it is totally going to improve your pickleball game. So, here we are. We're gonna take the paddle back and we're gonna drop. Again, we're going to take the paddle back and we're going to drop. You guys doing this with me? You guys better because this is going to be huge. All I'm doing is releasing my paddle. All I'm doing is releasing my paddle. One more, all I'm doing is releasing my paddle. Now, Tyler, well, how do I know if I am dropped in the proper position? How do I know that the drop is the exact location that you're talking about? It is huge right here. I'm going to do it one more time. Are you ready? Here's how. Take the paddle back, drop. Where is the butt cap of my paddle facing? I want you to see this. This is a huge key point for any level pickleballer. Look at the butt cap of the paddle. The butt cap of the paddle is pointing forward and up towards my opponent. If there was a laser shining out the butt cap of my paddle, the laser would be pointing up this way, okay? By pointing the laser, your paddle, or shining the flashlight towards your opponent, that's going to ensure that you are dropped in the proper position. Some players, they drop it way too much. Players don't even drop it. Look, if I don't drop the paddle, where is the butt cap facing? It's not facing to me, right? If I drop the paddle properly, paddle back and I drop it, look, the butt cap is pointing forward and up. So by pointing your butt cap, that's going to ensure that you drop in the proper position. So everyone, get up again, let's go. We're gonna take the paddle back. We're gonna hand the paddle back to the person behind me. We're passing the baton like we're in the 2008 Olympics. Here we are, excuse me. Then what are we going to do? Drop, take the paddle back, drop and point the butt cap. Now, once we point the butt cap, once we are in the proper position, now we can fire. I want you to think, taking the paddle back and dropping is like loading your ch -ch, right? And then when you fire, right? When you fire, then you're going to go. How do you know that you're fully loaded? You're going to know that you're fully loaded because the butt cap is pointing up and forward. So again, you're going to take the paddle back, then you're going to point the butt cap, you're going to drop, and then you're going to be able to get under the ball. I want you to notice how effortlessly, how easy that was for me to lift the ball over the air. Too many players, they struggle with getting the ball over the net. They can't get the ball over the net. We're going to nip that in the butt from the start. If you've been watching this video step by step by step, by pointing the butt cap, that's going to orient your paddle tip down. So prior to contact, you're going to get under the ball. Another way that you want to think about is you always want to tip your paddle below your wrist prior to contact. Once again, you always wanna make sure that the tip of your paddle is below your wrist prior to contact. If your paddle is at or above your wrist, you're going to be going down on the ball. So by pointing the butt cap, by dropping, that's going to ensure that the point of the tip of the paddle is below your wrist. So prior to contact, you're going to be able to get under and lift the ball. Again, like I said, 12 o'clock up here, six o'clock down here, you're going from six to 12. Now, once we get the drop, once we work on that, okay? And again, we're going to maybe bounce the ball twice, use your left hand, back, drop, butt cap, one, two, and then we're going to hit. Again, back, drop, one, two, and then we're going to hit. Just get that feel, get taking the paddle back and drop that three step process rather than that two. Then we are going to start making it more fluid. So instead of back, drop, wait for it, and then hit, it's going to start to go one, two, three, one, two, three, back, drop, hit, back, drop, hit, back, drop, hit, one, 
two, three. Load, explode, fire. Load, explode, fire, okay? One, two, three. Notice it's not one, two, three. It's not one, two, three. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. Because as soon as you drop the paddle, you fire. And that is huge. As soon as you're in this proper position, you let it go. My favorite quote in pickleball is, in pickleball to gain control, you have to give up control. The more you let the paddle work for you and the less you work for the ball, the better you are going to be. Well, Tyler, I have to slow down. I can't just let the paddle go. Yeah, the reason why is because you weren't in these positions before this video or before understanding and noticing where you should be in this video. If you don't have these proper positions and if you didn't crawl before you walked and implement every single one of these tips that I told you, you're not gonna be in the proper position. So your forehand drive, you're gonna to have to slow your swing down to get the ball in. That's the only thing that you're going to be able to do and you're going to hit a ceiling. Now, by getting into these technical aspects of pickleball, by getting into these proper positions, now you can just fire that paddle because you are in the proper position with ease, okay? You guys understand that before, you might have not have done all this stuff. So you had to slow it down and you would hit a peak. Now you can rip the ball as hard as you want. That's why when you go out to pickleball, you see McGuffin, Ben Johns, Paris Todd, Annalie Waters, Parento, any single person or the avatar ball bender, uh, what's his name, Quang Dong. Oh my God, that, the, the, the way that guy hits the ball is absolutely insane. You have to see this guy. He's not the top pickleballer yet, but the way he trains and the way he hits the balls, <laughs> it's crazy, but it's because they make it look so effortless, and that's what I'm trying to say. I got off on a tangent of how good this guy hits the ball. However, though, they make it look so effortless, and the reason why is because they're in the proper position. They're in the exact proper position that they can let it go, that they can make it look effortless. And guys, you're not that far away. You guys have to work on all these steps that we're going over, but if you can implement these tips into your game, these progressions into your game, you're going to be able to hit a big ball as well. So let's keep on going. Now again, making it continuous, okay? So I want you to go back to making that C. Pass it back, drop and hit. Pass it back, drop and hit. So you're going to have someone feed the ball to you. You're going to drop the ball to yourself. You could be hitting with someone and you're going to go back, drop, hit. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? The best way to learn this, okay? There's a lot of steps, there's a lot of timing, there's a lot of things that go can go wrong, a lot of variables, is by saying it out loud. By saying it out loud, it's going to actively teach your muscle memory. So if I'm working on this right now, if I saw this video, if I were you right now, I would go out to the court and I would say it to the point that the other pickleballers over there, those pickleballers can hear me. Let's see, okay, we're gonna make them hear me. And you wanna make your opponent hear you or your partner hear you because I am teaching my muscle memory, okay? Back, drop, hit. Oops, oh no, sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> here, so I, I didn't want that ball to go over, but that's okay, ready? So here we are, so I'm gonna get it over here, okay, right? So back, drop, hit, back, drop, hit, back, drop, hit. So I'm going to say it out loud over and over and over. Well, I got their attention, but I didn't get their intention, uh, their attention the right way because my ball hit and bounced up and went in their court. That's so annoying when you're playing pickleball and you have like a super high shot and then there's a ball on court what I do when I'm playing and if there's ever a ball in my court and I know that I'm being like, I'm winning the point, I will literally like push it away and then get back and then hit the ball. And then the opponent will be like, hey, well, there was a let. I'm like, I moved the ball. It's my point. I hit the ball. I kept it going. Yeah. Uh, let me know in the pickleball rule book. However, again, you have to make it more continuous. Now, Tyler, you told me to say backdrop hit. You told me to do that. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm working on it, but it's still so confusing. When am I supposed to pull the trigger? When is the trigger pulled? The trigger is pulled after the drop. When am I supposed to do that? Well, here is an amazing tip for you, okay? Are you guys ready? This is how it will make your timing so much better. If you struggle with proper timing, if you ever feel like you eat the ball, if you get too close, you get too far away on the ball, if you ever need to work on that, this is going to solve everything. And this is going to put the cherry on top for this three-step process, okay? When do you want to pull the trigger? When do you want to hit? I take the paddle back, I drop, 
when do I hit? When do I? Are you guys ready? You wanna hit when the ball bounces. Again, you wanna swing as soon as the ball bounces. You wanna drop as soon as the ball bounces. So watch, I'm going to take the paddle back, the ball is gonna bounce, drop, hit. Again, I'm going to demonstrate. I'm gonna take the paddle back, I'm gonna move the ball, bounce, drop, hit. As soon as the ball bounces, you want to drop and you want to hit. Once again, as soon as the ball bounces, you want to drop and you want to hit. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your paddle back. You're going to go to the ball. The ball is going to bounce. You're going to drop and hit. As soon as the ball bounces, you need to pull the trigger. Once again, as soon as that ball bounces, you need to drop and you need to hit. So the best way to do it is by tossing it up in there. You're gonna let the ball bounce once now, or you can have your opponent feed it to you or have your opponent hit it to you and watch your, what you're going to do. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Again, let's do it again. Let's make the uh, ball go over here. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. One more. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. As soon as the ball bounces, that's when you are going to drop and you're going to hit. Instead of it being back, drop, hit, now we are making it four steps. And I told you it wasn't going to be four steps, any more steps than three, which it kind of isn't, but it is another step to think. It's not a step of your swing, it's just another step to say, is paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. So instead of saying bounce, drop, hit, now we're saying paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Because as soon as the ball bounces, now you pull the trigger. Before, as soon as you drop the paddle, you pull the trigger. Now, as soon as the ball bounces, then you proceed with your drop and pull the trigger, okay? So again, paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Paddle back, bounce, drop, hit. Or bounce, drop, catch. So right there, I wasn't catching, right? So maybe what I like to do is if I struggle sometimes, I swing too forward, maybe I'll give, instead of the last one being, uh, hit, I'll say finish, or I'll say catch, okay? So you can customize bounce, drop, hit. You can customize your sayings based upon what you wanna work on. So sometimes maybe a person, they struggle with uh, finishing their shot. They stop, right? So instead of saying bounce, drop, hit, I'm going to say bounce, drop, finish for them. So utilize your three, four, two steps, whatever, or how many steps you're working on for your forehand, and it's going to allow you, by inserting different words, it's going to allow you to think about certain things. So maybe paddle back, bounce, loose, finish, or paddle back, bounce, loose, catch. Whatever you want to do by adding those things and saying them out loud, it's going to completely change your game and allow your muscle memory to understand and learn the forehand. So now once we understand the proper technique, now we have to go over how to get into the proper position of the ball. Again, we constructed this amazing, this beautiful swing by starting low to high, then starting with our hand out, which is going to help us get to the ball, and then low to high and catch, right, by dropping loose, then by learning how instead of doing a two-step process, just taking the paddle low to high, we're doing back, drop low to high, and then back bounce, drop, hit, right? Now what we're going to do is work on getting our feet into the proper position, okay? So the first thing that you have to understand is that there are two main stances to hit the actual forehand. Stance number one is the open stance and stance number two is the closed stance. Now, there are many different variations between that. So again, you have the closed stance here, you have the open stance here, then you have the more open, the semi-open, the tiny bit closed, right? There's so many different stances there. The big thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna take a step all the way outside of your body and you don't wanna take a step backwards. You either wanna take a step outside with your outside leg or you wanna step forward with your front leg or bring your front leg anywhere from your outside leg to your front leg, okay? We're going to be going over the main stances. Now, for nine out of 10 players, for more of the beginner, intermediate, club level players, for more shorter balls into the kitchen, if you're taking a third, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be taking that closed stance. Now, what is a closed stance? All that a closed stance is, means is that you are stepping with your front foot. Once again, if you wanna take a closed stance forehand, all you have to do is step forward with your front foot. So what you're going to do is instead of taking the paddle back, the ball is going to bounce, drop and hit. You're going to take the paddle back, the ball is going to bounce, step, drop, hit. Again, you're going to take the paddle back, the ball is going to bounce, step, drop, hit, okay? 
when you take the paddle back and then the ball bounces, instead of just dropping and hitting, you're going to step, drop, and hit. Again, the ball is going to bounce. You're going to take the paddle back. You're going to move the ball. As soon as the ball is going to bounce, you're going to step, drop, and hit. You're going to step with your non-dominant foot. So if I'm a right-handed player, I'm going to be stepping with my left foot. If I'm a left-handed player, I'm going to be stepping with my right foot. So all I'm going to do is, again, take the paddle back just like I did. The ball is going to bounce. I'm going to step, drop, and hit. Notice, this is a huge thing. It's step, drop, and hit. It's not drop, step, and hit, okay? It's hands, then feet, not feet, then hands. You need to get your legs into the ball before you swing. You can't swing and then step, and that's where a lot of players go wrong. So make sure, again, you step into the ball and then you swing. Did you guys see that shot? Sun, the sun's like shining right here, but he had a high one and missed it. That was pretty funny. Um, but again, the ball's going to bounce. You're going to move to the ball. You're going to step, drop, and hit. I keep on missing. Here we are. The ball's going to bounce. You're going to step, drop, and hit. Okay? Here is a big thing with the step. I want you to notice with my step. It's not a baby step. Okay? A lot of players, they take a baby step and then they fall. Their front uh, or their top half, their body goes forward. It's a big step. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the paddle back. The ball's going to bounce. I'm going to take a big step. I'm going to show the bottom of my shoe sole. You want to show the bottom of your shoe sole. You want to take a giant step and then you want to hit. You want a wide base so you can have balance, everyone. I want you to pretend that there's a super big, giant, crunchy bug on that ground, okay? Remember those lantern bugs if you were in like the Philadelphia area? They were infested back in like 2020 during COVID, right? You would see those bugs and they were invasive species. You want to, would want to step on them and they would crunch. I want you to see a lantern bug, okay? If you wait for that bug, if you go super, super nice, it's just going to go out of the way. It's going to fly away. You're not going to be able to kill it. You need to take a giant step. Plant that foot down. Take a giant step. And then I want you to hit, okay? So again, I want you to take a big step. I want you to step on that crunchy bug. I want you to show the bottom of your shoe sole. Okay, so again, you're going to take the paddle back. The ball is going to bounce, step, drop, and hit. Paddle back, the ball is going to bounce, step, drop, and hit. Okay, so now instead of paddle back, drop, and hit, now paddle back, or instead of paddle back, <laughs> it's hard teaching all the steps at once, variations of the steps. Okay, instead of taking the paddle back and you're going to bounce, drop, and hit, instead of four steps, now you're going to what? you're gonna put five steps into it. So paddle back. So now what you're going to do is make it even more steps. So paddle back is one, then bounce is two, step is three, drop is four, and hit is five. So again, now you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So now there are five darn steps. What are you talking about, Tyler? Well, hey, you need to perfect the first part of the video. That's why we had to get into this later because now we're jogging. We're not running yet, we're not sprinting yet, but we're jogging before we had to crawl. You can't do this without going step by step from the start. And that's why at Universal Rackets, what we teach is again, we teach the upper half. We teach you the exact swing, we master that exact swing, and then we get you in how to actually move into the shot, okay? So the best thing that you can do is again, you can work on bouncing the ball in front of you. So you're gonna take the paddle back, bounce, step, drop, hit. Again, you're gonna to toss the ball to you, bounce, step, drop, hit. You could have your opponent feed the ball to you and work on moving to the ball, bounce, step, drop, hit, or you could have your opponent hitting to you. Now, speaking about what I just said, moving to the ball. So now, instead of just having the proper footwork when the ball's fed right to me or when I'm just hitting the ball right near me, now we have to work on getting to the ball. Now, this is even more difficult, but if you're learning and you're working and you're practicing on everything we did step by step by step, you're going to get to this and it's going to be easy. If you're just starting out and you zoom fast forward to this part of this video, you're not going to do it. And if you do do it, you're going to become Ben John soon because your pickleball powers and comprehension is absolutely insane. Okay. So now we 
actually have to move to the ball, everyone, okay? So you don't step until you get close to the ball. I'd like to explain the step like the grab claw in the arcade. And what I mean by that is I have a beautiful five-year-old daughter, Sienna. She's amazing. We play pickleball, but also we go to the arcade. We play tennis as well. And at the arcade, what you're doing is you got to get the grab claw, those big giant um, whatever's in there, right? You got stuffed animals, you got prizes, you got candy, wherever. I consider myself an amazing grab claw person. When I was younger, I thought it was a scam, but now I'm really good at lining it up, getting the proper one. You gotta get one that's sticking out that you know the claw can actually grab, right? I always get my daughter a prize. Now, what do I have to do? I have to move the joystick, I have to try to get into the proper position, and then I press the claw and then I go, okay? You gotta move your joystick, you gotta try to get into the proper position, you feel like you're lined up, then you press the button, then it goes down, and then you try to go, okay? I want you to think you moving your joystick in the grab claw is like you moving to the ball. If you ever watch pickleballers, if you ever watch singles especially, I want you to watch their feet, not their hitting and the ball. If you ever watch these pickleballers' feet, I want you to look how many little steps they take. If you ever go see any type of hardcore pickleball match, any type of single match, all that you hear, I don't know if the mic can pick it up, but they hear ch -ch 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 -ch. The reason why, the pickleball players in singles, the top players, they're not taking big steps and then going to hit. They are moving to the ball and they're here, 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 and then they're hitting again. They're moving to the ball, paddle back, move to the ball, little steps, little steps, little steps, and then they hit. The reason why they're taking so many little steps and little adjustment steps is to get that grab claw properly aligned so they can make proper contact with the ball. They're trying to pinpoint, they are trying to get so precise that they're in such the proper position that they can pinpoint their shot and make amazing contact with the ball. So what you have to do is you have to think that the ball's over here, okay? The prize is over here in the arcade. You're gonna take your paddle back, you're gonna to move to the ball. You're moving your grab claw, you're moving. And then once you think you're in the proper position, then you're going to step and hit. Notice if I'm not in the proper position, but I go for it, maybe I'll miss my prize. As soon as you step, right, that's when everything happens. That's when you fire the gun. That's when you press the get the, get the prize button on the grab claw, right? So what you have to start doing is you have to start working on getting your non-dominant hand out to the ball, just like I said before, and then bounce, step, drop, hit. Again, you're going to work on moving to the ball. So go take your paddle back. Here we are. The ball's gonna be out here. So I move to the ball. I get there with my non-dominant hand. Bounce, step, drop, hit. Now, I didn't drop on that one. That's okay. I'm so sore. I've been resting from pickleball. Uh, for the past month and a half now and working out and yesterday was the first day that I worked out in forever And my body is so sore. It's insane. So I apologize if I'm missing. Okay, so I want you to notice something huge Okay, when I go out to this ball watch what I do with my outside leg right when I catch this ball here We are boom look what I do. I put my outside leg out first and then I Step and I hit I want you to notice. I'm not going like this I'm not going like this and hitting. That's where too many players go wrong. They go here and then they hit. I'm going on my outside leg. Here we are. And then I'm stepping forward. So I want you to think that there are two main movements to do when you're hitting your ground stroke. Movement number one, I need to go this way. And then movement number two, I press the grab claw and then I go forward. I want to move to the ball. And once I'm done moving to the ball this way, I'm going to step with my outside leg. That's going to stop me from going this way. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to pull the trigger or press the grab claw, and then I'm going to go forward. So great thing that you can think about is heel to toe, let it go. I want you to think, when I go out on my heel, my outside heel, I'm done going this way. All my weight's on my heel, and I'm going to step forward to my toe, and then I'm going to let it go. Again, I'm going to turn, take my paddle back. I'm going to move to the ball. I'm going to plant all my weight on my outside heel. Heel, then I'm going to step forward to my toe, and then I'm going to let it go. That's going to allow me to have a weight transfer as well, which is going to allow me to get more power into my shots. All the power comes from your momentum, your rotation, and your legs, and we're going to get into that shortly, okay? So again, the ball's over here. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to load on my heel, toe, 
let it go. Again, one more, here we are. Balls out here, I'm gonna load on my heel, toe, let it go. Heel to toe, let it go. I'm gonna go out to the ball, I'm going to think that I'm in the proper position, I can get it with my non-dominant hand, we already taught you that. Now, I'm loading on the outside leg, I'm stopping going this way, then I'm going to step and hit. Now, a great drill to do, especially if someone feeds the ball to you, you can do it as well by tossing the ball, but it's just not as good. But if you're only by yourself, you can do it. Is toss the ball to yourself, work on going out to the ball and getting into this position. Again, someone's gonna toss the ball to you. Look, I gotta move to the ball. I gotta get in this position. Someone's gonna toss the ball back here to me. I'm gonna move to the ball, get in this position. Ball's over here, I'm gonna move to the ball, get in this position. Now, after you get in this position, you're working on really catching it and leading with that outside leg, and then you're gonna drop the ball, and then you're gonna take a big step, and you're gonna hit. So again, work on really getting familiar with this. Again, you're gonna to move to the ball here. You're gonna to move to the ball here, and then once you get it again, then you're going to step and hit. If you don't have the ball, hit your thumb when you're tossing it up in there. Oh my gosh, guys, this is a long video. But again, we're going over everything, how to hit an amazing forehand, starting you from scratch. And notice, uh, just like the video, it takes time, right? And think about all this time, I've done this since I was five years old, hit a forehand, right? In tennis, okay, and then the pickleball, but I've done this over and over again. Think of this video and then multiply it by all the hours that you have to actually work on and practice on court. It's gonna take a, lot, a little bit, it's gonna take a while, but it's going to be so rewarding. So let's keep on going. So now what you're going to do is once you get the step-by-step -step process, now you're going to start having the person feed the ball to you. Realize the further you and your partner get away from each other, the more difficult it's going to be, okay? So you have to start out, try to start out with a self feed or a ball close to you and then gradually go back. Now, after you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to start putting it together. So you're going to go outside, bounce, step, hit. Again, you're gonna go paddle out, heel to toe, let it go. Paddle out, bounce, step, hit, okay? By doing it over and over and over again, saying heel to toe, let it go, or bounce, step, hit, that's going to teach you the adequate muscle memory. Notice, you have to know the whole swing path because you can't say the swing path and the footwork pattern, okay? Now, we went over to closed stance, now we are going to go over the open stance. Now, when do you wanna use the closed stance forehand and pickleball? You wanna use the closed stance when the ball is around here on court. Now, for the open stance, you wanna use when you're pulled more out wide, you wanna use more for singles to be more efficient. Think, if someone pulls me out wide, watch what I can do. I can just go out, boom, hit my open stance, and then I can come back. Again, I can go on my outside leg, boom, hit my open stance, and then go back. Now, I think the open stance is easier to learn than the closed stance. However, you need to have discipline. You need to have proper technique to do it. If you don't have proper technique, you can get really sloppy with the open stance. Some players, they hit open stance, but not because they really know how and they're confident, but because they're just being flat on lazy and they don't know how to really do it. And what I mean by that is if I teach you this right now, I don't want you to just hit every ball like this because you're not gonna be rotated. You need to use the open stance, just like you use the slice and all these other cool shots I taught you, you need to use it with caution and use it in the proper position. So for the open stance forehand, what you're going to do is instead of after you're loading, you're going to step forward, all you're going to do is you're going to load in your outside leg and then you're going to explode forward. Again, what you're going to do is instead of stepping forward, the closed stance, I'm going to step forward. For the open stance, I'm gonna load in my outside leg and then I'm going to explode forward. Again, I'm gonna load in my outside leg then I'm going to explode forward. The big thing is, is you wanna make sure that you are turned. You wanna make sure that you stay turned. Too many open stancers, they open up their body prematurely and the ball goes super long. So you wanna make sure again, you turn and you load on your outside leg. Again, you're gonna turn and you're gonna load. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna turn, and you're gonna push all your weight in the ground. Then you're gonna make contact and you're going to push off the ground. So I want you to think, you're pushing in the ground, off the ground, in the ground, off the ground, in the ground, off the ground, okay? You're pushing in the ground, off the ground, in the ground, off the ground. Notice, I'm pushing from my legs, I'm not pushing from my head. A common misconception, a common mistake that many pickle players do is that they pick their head up when they do it. No, I'm pushing in the ground, off the ground. Keeping my head down, I'm pretending that there's a ceiling above my head. I like to be six foot tall, I never wanna go past six foot. Okay, I have a ceiling here, I can't go above the ceiling. In the ground, off the ground. So again, what you're going to do is you're gonna go out to the ball, you're going to load on your outside leg, in the ground, 
off the ground, explode. I gotta get under it more. Again, in the ground, off the ground, explode. Again, in the ground, off the ground. So really work on that. Really work on keeping your body down and forward, okay? You need to keep your body turned. You need to keep your body down and forward. So go to the ball, get into the leg, off the leg. Okay, now I have to be a little bit looser. Guys, this is a long <laughs> video, okay? So now what we're going to do is we worked on the open stance, we worked on the closed stance, we went over the proper technique. Now we're just going to go over a little tips. A lot of players, the main thing is that they open up prematurely. A great thing that you can do to not open up prematurely, and I'm going to just be spitting tons of tips that can instantly improve your forehand if we already did improve your forehand, which is absolutely impossible because we went over basically everything in the book. But what you can do is if you open up, you can think two, one, two. Instead of back, drop, hit, you're going to think two, one, two. A lot of players, they don't rotate properly, they just use their arm. If you can take your paddle back, instead of with your dominant hand, you can take it back with your non-dominant hand, look, that's going to automatically rotate your body. So again, instead of taking your paddle back with your dominant hand, you're going to push it back with your non-dominant hand. That's going to automatically rotate your body, so you're coiled, and then you can hit. So again, two hands for take back, that's going to ensure, if two hands are on the paddle during your take back, that's going to ensure that you're turned. Then one hand for out in front like we worked on, and then two hands for the follow throw. Two, one, two will completely change your game. So again, go out, go hit your returns, your drives, whatever you want, and go two, one, two, and it will make a big difference on court. Next thing that you can do to completely transform your forehand is instead of hitting through one balls, think that you're hitting through three balls. The more forward you swing, the more you'll penetrate the court. The more up you swing, the more deeper you'll hit through the court. A lot of players, they can't hit a lot of power on their shots, not only because they're rotated, but just because they're swinging up. If you can think that instead of just hitting one ball, you're hitting through one, two, three balls, you're going to be able to generate more power and drive through the court. A great drill to do that I do with my students is you put a, an actual ball cart with wheels, you could do this up at the net, and what you're going to do is you're going to freeze the contact. You're going to make sure your contact's down front. You're going to push the ball cart forward, and then you're going to hit. Again, notice, I don't just make contact here and then I go up. I hit through one, two, three balls. I swing forward and then up. Another tip on top of that is if you point the tip of your paddle after you make contact, that's going to ensure that you're really driving the ball and then hit. So once again, notice, I take the paddle back, I drop the ball, drop the paddle, then I make contact here, then I keep going forward, keep going forward, then I point the tip of my paddle towards my opponent, and then I finish. That's another amazing tip. Another amazing tip is that so many players, what they try to do is they try to see wherever their ball goes, they pick their head up. Instead of picking your head up, I want you to keep your head down. So I want you to keep your eye on the ball. I want you to hit, watch the ball hit the center of your paddle and notice my head is down throughout my shot. I do not pick up my head. I do not finish and get to the next shot until I fully follow through. A lot of players, they look like this trying to get it in. That's the next step as well. Make sure you finish before you go to the next ball. Again, you're gonna go out to the ball, you're going to finish, and then you're going to go to the next ball. You're not gonna hit and you're gonna try to come back to the next shot. Another thing, and this is worked on by the catch, but again, a lot of players, they open up prematurely or their non-dominant hand is not involved. I want you to think that you have handcuffs, your arms are tied up. You always want both hands to be synchronized with each other. Too many players open up because their left hand is not synchronized with their right hand, and again, they open up. So think that your hands are tied together. So wherever my left hand moves, my right hand moves. Wherever my right hand moves, my left hand moves throughout my shot. A great uh, exercise to do is get a medicine ball, or if you don't have a medicine ball, you can turn your paddle sideways, and you can just work on doing your shots with the paddle sideways. Paddle back, step, hit, to get both of your hands synchronized, okay? Now, with topspin, the more you tilt the tip of your paddle down or the face of your paddle down, the more topspin that you're going to get. However, it's not going to grip the ball like a tennis shot. I would recommend starting a little bit east in. The more advanced you get, you could tilt the paddle more downward. I want you to notice something. If I'm hitting a regular ball continental, watch the spin. Here we are. If I'm hitting, <laughs> that was horrible. That was the worst shot I've ever hit. Let's try that again. So if I'm hitting a ball regular continental, watch the ball. 
If I'm hitting a ball western or more with spin, I tilt the tip of the paddle down, face paddle down, it's going to dive more in. So by tilting the face of your paddle downward, by facing it more downward, it's going to be better. A lot of players say, what grip do I hit? What grip do you use? I do not teach grips in pickleball, and that's not because I'm not educated about it. It's because different tips work for different people. One size does not fit all. So I do not like telling students what grip to be in. I, the main things that I don't look for is an open grip with your paddle face open, or having your paddle face tilted fully downward I want it somewhere between I don't like saying you need to be in this grip because what if your hand what if your flexibility what if the way your wrist is made up by uh, humanity is a little bit different maybe you'll be a little bit here maybe so do whatever feels comfortable for you that is between here and here so anywhere in between is good the more advanced you get probably the more tilted your paddle face is going to get now the last thing that I want to give to every single one of you is make sure that you keep your body balanced as well. A lot of players, they stand up six feet tall, they're super out balanced, they're moving, everything like that. If you can drop your center of gravity, if you can keep your body down, if I'm six feet, I want to be five feet. If I can keep my body down when I hit, that's going to give me more power, more consistency, and more control. Stay balanced, don't fall out of your shot. How do we stay balanced? Easily, we drop our center of gravity. Now, Guys, we went over so many things from beginner to advanced. We went over what? The basic swing, how to learn the forehand. Then we added things to the forehand. Then we made it even more advanced. My best thing for you is start from the beginning. You can't finish, you can't sprint before you crawl or walk. You have to crawl or walk before you run, then, or then you jog, then you run, then you sprint. Make sure you apply the same aspect to this video. Everyone's looking for all these videos, how to hit an amazing forehand. This is literally step by step and it's been proven because I've went over all these progressions with all my students coming from no sports, prior sports background whatsoever. So if you guys like this video, make sure to share with your friends, make sure to share with your family, make sure to not share this to your opponents because they'll have an amazing forehand. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like. If you want any type of pickleball programming in the area, make sure to click the link, fill out the Google form and a Universal Rackets representative will get it out to you. If you guys love this video, make sure to say thanks. Some Something, comment. I love comments. Comments are good engagement. Have a good one. Happy hitting. Subscribe to our newsletter. Follow me on Instagram, Pickleball with Tyler. Follow my wife, The Pickle Yogi, and we will see you guys next time on court.